America's hospitals are places of healing and hope, but they're also home to a growing threat. You may have heard of MRSA, a dangerous infection that can usually be treated with antibiotics, but now an increasing number of patients are being infected with a new class of superbugs that are difficult, if not impossible, to treat. Tonight, the human toll these deadly infections are taking. I don't know what went wrong. It's so not fair. It's a very difficult thing to swallow. Jackie Cash and her sisters, Katie and Moira, weren't worried when their 78-year-old father, Bill, checked into this New York hospital earlier this month with a highly treatable form of pneumonia. But now this once healthy, active man is clinging to life after he got an infection that's resisted everything the doctors have thrown at it. You realize, oh my God, there may not be something out there that can actually, you know, fix this. And that is a horrendous realization. The organism raging through Bill Shields is called KPC Klebsiella. It's one of the five deadly superbugs turning up in America's hospitals with alarming frequency. Now responsible for 60% of all ICU infections. What these organisms have done by creating super antibiotic resistance is they've sent us, they've sent medicine back 70 years in time. Brad Spellberg is an infectious disease doctor and author of a new book, Rising Plague. There are increasing cases of infections caused by bacteria that are resistant to every FDA approved antibiotic. And we literally have no treatment for those bacteria. The particularly vicious Klebsiella, first reported 10 years ago in one hospital in one state, has now been found in hospitals in 35 states. A lot of what we do is, is basic detective work. At the Centers for Disease Control, Arjun Srinivasan tracks these lethal superbugs. I think the most common sources that we see for the transmission of these types of organisms are the hands of healthcare personnel. These bacteria can live for years on hospital surfaces, entering the body through open wounds, catheters, and ventilators. Outpatient surgical centers are particularly vulnerable. A recent study found more than half didn't practice necessary infection control through hand washing and sterilization. It was the worst day of my life. Keisha Warren's 67-year-old mother, Ruth, got a superbug at this outpatient clinic in Columbus, Ohio, where she went for a pinched nerve in her back. But just days after surgery, she became infected by Acinetobacter, which used to be found only in battlefield hospitals. How do you think your mom, going through elective surgery, got this superbug? Somebody had to have touched something in that room that contained that live bacteria. And she got that obviously within her body. She didn't go in there with it. 17 days after her surgery, Ruth Burns was dead. Must have been so impossible for you to believe that this had happened to your healthy mom. Absolutely. Devastating. Devastating. She was 10 days away from retirement, the happiest chapter of her life and would never have one day to enjoy. How did we get to this point? For many years, we, we always had resistance with us. But for years, whenever it caught up, the drug companies would just come out with the next generation of antibiotic and the problem would be solved. We're no longer getting bailed out with new antibiotic development. And families like Bill Shields are paying the price. Seeing my dad on a ventilator is just it's a very difficult thing. Our lives right now are very, very different than where they were a few weeks ago. It's estimated tens of thousands of people are dying from these superbugs every year, but only half the states require hospitals to report infection rates. So public health officials fear the numbers may be even higher.